Hey, hi. Ano Jairo here to talk about a situation I was in for the last six months that not everyone gets into. So, I was super motivated to get my last overclock in Deep Rock Galactic. It was, of course, special powder. But the strangest thing happened the week after I got it. Instead of doing everything I could to try it out, I stopped playing DRG. Sure, I'd get on if someone needed some missions or to do a few assignments with friends, but it was like once a week instead of nearly every day. And I didn't do any deep dives or any elite dives for a good couple of months. It took me a while to figure out why I was in such a slump. And there were two parts to it. One, I'd basically finished all the goals the game had given me. And two, I lost most of the people I was playing it with as they'd lost interest in the game. I like having goals. I have to admit that. I like having something I can shoot for and accomplish, and the overclocks had provided for a very long time. Also, regular content creation by Ghost Chip helped a lot. As with every season pass, I had more things to do. But I finished those pretty quickly with the help of the special events, so there really was nothing left. On the other hand, I also know that I've played Team Fortress 2 for 2300 hours, and Valve hasn't updated it for nearly six years, so external motivation in that game is a no-go. So that wasn't the only thing that was stopping me. The funny thing for me was realizing that a good number of my TF2 friends, some of whom I'd made after we'd all hit the multi-thousand hour mark, weren't leaving that game. Ever. But I found them all after they'd gotten to this point of committing for the long term. I also realized that when I did solo play in TF2, it was on Uncle Topia servers, which are run by a community that shares the same ideas that I have about what makes playing the game fun. Losing friends to play with turns out to be a very common experience in DRG. Most players get to their first promotion and stop at about that time for a variety of reasons. It's a game. Everyone has every right to stop playing it when they want to, but those that really want to get deeper into the game and experience everything that's possible with all the overclocks often lose the groups that they're playing with. Three people I know with huge hours in the game have all lost multiple groups of friends over the course of their time in the game. I realized I'd have to find more people to play with. It wasn't obvious to me at first how to do that with DRG, as all the servers are random ones that people pop up for public use. But then I realized that while DRG has a fine Discord server and a very nice community, going to it for a gaming group was a bit like a blind date. I'd never know what I'd find, and sometimes it was a really painful experience. I mean, yes, the community as a whole is really happy to help you out, but what constitutes help can vary depending on a lot of hidden assumptions people make about the game. Some people mine everything they see. Others refuse to mine gold. Some will not leave until every primary and secondary mission, every machine event, Meteor, Meteorite, and Miniboss is done and dusted, whereas others will leave when the primary is done. Some folks won't let any dwarf get left behind, whereas others will politely ask you to kill yourself so they can finish quickly. Some people want to be in voice chat together, able to call out focus fire and priority threats, whereas others scoff at any of that and prefer to listen to their own YouTube playlist far away from worrying about anyone else in the game. Some hosts want you to ask before getting a resupply because they could be using them for other tasks. Some don't care. Most people fit in between all these polarities, and most will cut some slack if there's a mismatch. When a friend group learns together, they usually learn the same things. But when that group breaks apart, going with that set of unconscious agreements to another group, or even just to play with other people, those assumptions get challenged. I mean, People get through their missions. It's a testament to Ghost Ship's abilities in balancing that they're able to create a game with characters, weapons, and tools that allow everyone to make those choices for themselves and their playgroups. But it makes it really interesting to A, figure out what assumptions you have, and B, find people with the same ones. It makes it way too much like dating.
And yeah, there's definitely abusive behavior out there. Especially if I use voice chat and gamers discover that there's a grill in the cave. And I'll avoid anyone who's all death to leaf lovers. It's too close to all kinds of racial slur behavior throughout history. It turns out that there are solutions to finding the good ones. The biggest clue I've found is in people's builds. What they bring and how they use it really does show a lot about their philosophies. And it turns out that people naturally gravitate towards people that are like them. Lots of YouTubers and Twitch players have discords, and chances are that if you've tried a build by your favorite player and it's really worked out well for you, you're likely to share some assumptions with the people there. And if the conversations in stream or on their server are ones you like or are interested in, the chances get even higher. I've also realized that levels can matter, that other people who are past the overclock slog and are still playing often have other motivations and realize why they play, and if they can put that into words is a great way to connect. Yeah, I know, it's hard to talk with people, but it's really worth it sometimes to just match up some of those assumptions before you go into the cave together. Brand new players are really fun too. They don't have hardened assumptions and are willing to try anything. Everything is new to them, and their wonder with the game is real. They help me be less jaded about what we do, and best of all, I feel like I can really help them out. Watching speedrunners like Benny Copter and his pal Snoop has also inspired me. There are so many things that they do that I would never have thought to try without their example. And they use a different loadout for every recorded run refining those loadouts for what they come across, and often changing them up drastically to fit. It's a very far cry from those who stick to a single loadout for their entire time in the game, and gives me more reasons to explore my new overclocks. I found videos by Milligan and Gaming Existence that go into the strategic reasons behind loadouts. Those are especially useful for me, unlike the candy common I like this opinion loadout videos that are everywhere. Materialists are so useless because they're all about the opinion of the person who made it, not any objective evaluation of the weapon. And if you really want to get in-depth analysis, everything by Lazy Maybe has the full-on data sets he used to draw his conclusions. The best part is that they give me the opportunity to do the numerical analysis myself. Just please. Understand what the words, this is a weak conclusion based on a too small data set means, before touting his conclusions as the be all end all capital T truth. I also love watching Axis Kronos play. He seems to push the ceiling of what you can do in the game every time he goes out. The concept that there is still so much to explore, especially with all the abilities that having all the overclocks can give, is life giving. Finding these people has been a godsend in these dry times before Season 4, but I expect it'll pick up for everyone when the new season hits. And who knows, you might find your best new mining pal just by asking. <laughs>